it's winter in Maui. You can tell because there's waves on the North Shore. And if you're thinking about heading into the waves, being able to get on your board and get to your feet in a hurry is a real plus. So in this video, I want to share some techniques I've learned along the way. And whether you're in the waves or on flat water, they're good techniques to know. The first one, when I fall between the board and the sail, I bring the two together and pull myself up as if I was getting out of a swimming pool or similar to doing a, a push-up or muscle-up. When you place your hand on top of the wing, it actually gives you more leverage to push yourself up onto the board, but you don't have the control that you'd have with the handle. So in windy conditions, you might want to use the handle on the front of the wing. There are advantages to using a harness, but one disadvantage is climbing on the board. So this method of getting on the board not only gets you on the board faster, but addresses the harness hook problem. There's another technique I've been using, and I think this one started when I was using a camera on the front of the wing. I was trying to keep the camera dry. So I was holding the boom and the wing above my head. And I learned that I could manipulate the boom and the wing to get enough lift to actually pull me up onto the board. Now this technique does favor a wing with a boom because you can move your hand around to infinite locations. It will work with a wing with handles, you just have to move your hand around until you find the balance point. Too far forward and you don't get enough lift. Too far back and you're oversheeted. When I was first learning to wing surf, like so many people, I spent a lot of time kneeling on the board. And after the second day, my knees were literally bleeding. So while I was sitting there on the board, I thought there has to be another way. And I came up with this. Now that day when I improvised, it was very windy and I had a lot of power in the wing to pull me to my feet. But since then I've learned to do it in lighter and lighter wind. Now this technique is not for everybody. It does require some flexibility and some leg strength. There's a few subtle techniques. One is I'm sliding to the windward side of the board to get the board to lean to windward. It just makes it easier to get my foot under my bum. The other is I'm leaning back as I bring my foot up on the board. Now aside from these techniques, one prerequisite is that the board is lined up across the wind. Here's a few exercises you can practice on the beach that will make it easier in the water. Now you want to do this in light to moderate wind, but the goal is to move your hand along the boom or handles until you find the balance point. And what I mean by balance point is there's a steady pull in the wing. It's not sheeted out and you're not oversheeted. Just a quick note, the wing I'm using is a Duotone prototype, and something similar to this should be available in 2021. Once you find the balance point, steer the wing with one hand, twisting your wrist to make the wing go up or down. This is easiest with a boom, but you can do it with handles as well. Another exercise is practicing what I call touch and goes. And you can do this by sitting on the beach, sheeting in and standing up, as well as sitting down for a soft landing. In stronger wind, you should be able to do this with one leg. As you do this exercise, whether kneeling or sitting, try to keep the wing directly over your head to maximize the vertical lift.
Now there are times when the wind is light and it's not enough to pull me to my feet, so I do resort to going back to a kneeling start. But hanging on to the wing with one hand frees up my other hand to give me support to get to a kneeling position. I hope you're able to incorporate some, if not all, of these techniques into your wing riding sessions. Special thanks to Patty Cadiz and all Patreon team members that helped to make this video possible.